Hello everyone, Chris Odegaard, the Prolific Investor here. Today's topic is another book review. The book is titled The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future by Jeff Booth. But before I get into the book, let's have a word from one of our sponsors. Oh, the sponsor's me. Um, I haven't put this out on the website before, but certainly it's uh, been on social media. My first, is, my first book is coming out in a few months. It's called Get Off Your Ass and Manage Your Money, Why You Need Alternative Investments. And if you'd like to be one of the first ones to get the book, you can go to the homepage at theprolificinvestor.net. There's a little green star there, and you can put your name on a list to be one of the first people to get the book. And that would be awesome if I had some uh, pre-orders before the book comes out. So now, on to the book. Uh, the Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future by Jeff Booth. Now, this is one of the most thought-provoking books I've read in, in a long time. Uh, Jeff is predicting deflation in the future. And almost no one is predicting a future with deflation. Everyone talks about inflation and maybe, in some cases, even hyperinflation due to all the government borrowing and printing of U.S. dollars. So why is deflation coming, according to the author? Technology. Technology is deflationary. You know, entrepreneurs and business people are all about bringing more and more products and services and value to consumers and businesses at lower and lower prices. Think about, think about your mobile phone. Almost everything on your phone is free or, or relatively free. Some of you will remember the days when long distance phone calls were just incredibly expensive. Now they're practically free, even internationally. So, yes. Things are getting cheaper, but it's coming at the expense of jobs due to cheaper labor overseas and robotics and computers. Jeff says that technology is doubling every 18 months. So if you're a person with a type of mindset that says, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to learn that new technology. I'm going to keep doing things the old fashioned way. You might want to think again, because in 36 to 48 months from now, you might not be able to function everything will be different. You might not be able to do everything or anything the old fashioned way. So the opposite uh, to deflation is inflation. And that's what mo most people are talking about and predicting. And there's a good reason, you know, it's caused by the massive uh, money printing and borrowing uh, by the government. And the government wants a certain amount of inflation because it slowly erodes the government's debt over time. Now, while, you know, prices of certain things are rising, housing, for example, the stock market is up also. Jeff is saying in his book that, you know, the massive deflationary power of technology is going to overpower the inflationary effects of what the government's doing. So what does this mean to you as an, as an investor? Well, in an inflationary environment where prices are rising, you want to deploy cash as quickly as you can into appreciating assets, whether it be real estate or the stock market, because your cash has, become, has less and less buying power as it sits in the drawer or in the bank account. In a deflationary environment where the purchasing power of your dollar is increasing, you want to hold on to your cash because it's going to buy more stuff tomorrow than it can today. Now, the way this book has affected my thinking uh, about investments is it makes me think about what's the term uh, of my investment. If I have an investment that's going to take five to seven years to return all of my capital uh, plus, you know, my profits, Five to seven years is a long time. In five years, technology will have, have doubled, will have doubled three times. And what seems like a good investment today might not be a good investment in five years or five years and might be obsolete. So it's causing me to, you know, there's no magic answer here, but it's causing me to think very carefully about what I invest in and how durable is that future in, in an environment where technology is doubling every 18 months. And is my investment the type of thing, you know, that could be replaced or made obsolete or significantly changed by te technology? So again, here's the book. And 
Don't forget my book, um, Get Off Your Ass and Manage Your Money, Why You Need Alternative uh, Investments, and go out there and, and pre-order your copy if you like. And remember, when you make better financial decisions, someday you can make work a choice instead of a necessity, and catch you on the next video.